Hi viewers, welcome to another edition of Marie Clinic Live. How are you today? I remain your host, Moralaya and Obuti. And happy Mother's Day. Woo! We celebrate all the mothers in the house. We celebrate our moms everywhere, all over the world. We say you are a great woman and that we love you as a mother. We celebrate ourselves as mothers. We celebrate everyone today that is a woman. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. I'm so, so um, happy about today's celebration. It's always good for us to celebrate our women and also celebrate our men and children as well. It's, it's very important to do that. Thank you so much. Um, I would like to also use this opportunity to thank every member of Mary Clinic Thank you for always following us, for always commenting, for um, sharing your perspective on all the posts and the tiles we put up. It's usually very interesting. I mean, we see the different perspective and the mindset, you know, to different um, issues. Thank you so much. And I would also like to welcome all our new members. <laughs> During the week, we had about 20 new members. I celebrate you all. Welcome to Mary Clinic. Um, we want to encourage you to continue to follow us, continue to join us, and please do participate. Don't just be a dormant member. Try to um, follow the conversation. Try to participate because um, you will learn a lot as you participate. And another good news is that um, during the week, Marie Clinic eats 2,000 members. Woo! So right now we are over 2,000 members and um, I'm hoping and believing that very soon we'll be eating a million, we'll be eating, you know, tens of million. I mean, this is how it starts. So thank you so much to everyone that is following us, inviting someone to join, please do continue to invite someone. I believe there are so many people out there that need the knowledge we are sharing on this platform. Do ask them to join and I believe that as they join, they are going to be learning a lot. Thank you so much to everyone. And um, I would also quickly like to talk about um, the issue um, trending right now, which is um, COVID-19, the coronavirus issue. Um, last week, I talked about how we need to take precaution as a family, how we need to ensure that our children, um, our family members, you know, do not It's important that we take time. You know, it's not a panic. This is not the season to fear. I mean, already quite a number of people are in panic mode. But just know that this too shall pass. I mean, we've survived quite a number of um, these viruses. I remember SARS, we survived it. We survived um, Ebola. I mean, and here we are with COVID-19. I believe that it will expire soon. and. You know, we all can be free to do what we want to do. However, it's important that we take precaution. Please and please try to um, obey the instructions given by our government. And you yourself, in your own, try to take precaution. You know, for our children, please always encourage them not to put their hands in their mouth. Encourage them to wash their hands very well before they eat. When they use the restroom, they need to wash their hands well. With the adult, we need to do the same thing. Try and use sanitizers as well. And another precaution we could embrace is to make sure that we boost our immunity by taking um, the vitamins that helps to boost the immunity. It's important we do this for our kids, especially, and even as adults, please do that. Try to take vitamins and um, any other medication you know could help in boosting immunity. As we do this, I pray that God will see us through this. 
and that nothing, no evil shall come near us, no evil shall come near our dwelling. I mean, we will just keep carrying it with our ears, but it, it will not happen to us. We will not be partakers of such things. And um, I want you to know that this season of this COVID-19, I believe that it's another season for economic reset. You know, there is a shaking up that is going on right now, whether you know it or not. Some people are seeing opportunities in the midst of all of this. And I pray that you too will see opportunities, you know, in the midst of this crisis rather than just panicking, you know. Um, aside from the opportunities, a lot is happening. There's a lot of reset taking place, you know, if only we will pay attention and we will ask God to open our eyes to see what he really wants us to see during this season. And you realize that it's not um, completely bad after all, because the hand of it, you know, would be something um, we all will be grateful to God for that we passed through it and we survived it. And you know, while I was preparing for today's um, topic, um, something came to my mind that, wow, another thing COVID-19 would do to people is that it will, it will stop those people that like to go with side chickens and side dude and side this, side that, you know, the promiscuous ones, it will curtail their movement this time and, you know, it will discourage them from engaging in such practices. I tell you, these things have a way of, you know, putting people in their places and and telling them that you know what you just have to learn discipline in whatever way this thing is equally telling us to be disciplined so i would like to encourage you out there i'm not condemning anyone i'm simply saying please try as much as possible to take precaution now during this season do away with um, such lifestyle as much as you can and be focused as an individual, this is the time for us to look up more to God, you know, rather than just, you know, satiating or satisfying our own human desires. Let's look up to Him and let's know His heart, His plan concerning everything that, that is happening. And I'm so sure that, you know, He will see us through this and very soon we'll come out of it. So thank you once again for joining us. So, Back to today's topic. Today we'll be looking at the topic two are better than one, not battered by one. Such an interesting topic. So two are better than one. You know, it's actually a scripture verse somewhere in Ecclesiastes and um, Ecclesiastes 4, which says that two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. Mm. Now, what that means is that when two people come together, mm, they, it is expected that they become better. You know, that two are better than one is actually two becoming better than one. So that means when you were single, what you are able to do now that you are married should be um, much more than when you are single. As a matter of fact, you should be operating in the multiplier mode once you get married. Now, when I'm talking about the multiplier mode, you know, once you are married, I'm not just talking about, you know, producing children alone. I mean, in every ramification, you should increase as a human being, not only in number, in achievement, in accomplishment, in your endeavors. I mean, you should be better than you um, went in into the marriage, you know. It's expected that both of you will synergize. You know, it's a partnership. And this partnership is meant to bring a return. It's meant to bring a reward. You know, you're supposed to find it profitable. That is the whole essence of the marriage arrangement. You are, it's expected to be a blessing. It's a good thing. That is the way 
the um, inventor of marriage designed it, it's meant to be a good thing. It's meant to be a blessing. It's meant to add to you and not to and not to take from you or to divide you. You know, it's meant to multiply you. It's meant to increase you. And it's also meant to bring out the best in you. You know, but what we see at times is that when someone gets married, is as if that person's head is being bowed down. You know, is as if, oh, this partner of mine wants my head bowed down in shame. That is the way some other people feel. But the honest truth is, it shouldn't be like that. Two, I expected to be better than one. And you know what really makes them better? Is because both of them will have a reward for their labor. So what that means is that what will make them better is actually as a result of the labor or the work they do. And not just because, oh, two good, two people come together. You know, there's this saying that, oh, two good eggs are better than one. Now, imagine even if two good eggs come together to become one. And let's assume one of them decide that, okay, in this union, I'm going to leave everything to just one person to do. You know, I'm just going to sit down as a dormant partner, as a spectator. I will watch as things um, unfold, as events unfold in this marriage. I will not participate. I will not labor in any way. I will not contribute in any way. Then it, it, it won't be a better um, arrangement. You won't experience that better than one arrangement. But it is when both are laboring, when both are working, that you will experience the blessing, the better that comes with it. There is, it is actually supposed to bring about a better life for both parties that went into the union. You, know, you both should find or experience a better life in the marriage than before you got married. But when you are feeling like, ha, I'm, I'm worse off than I came in. Oh, you are feeling like, oh, life is being taken from you. You are feeling sapped of your energy. You are feeling that the worst of you is what is, you know, being brought out in this union. Then there is a problem. You know, any marriage that is bringing out the worst in you is not a healthy one. It's not a good one. It's a toxic one relationship. A toxic relationship will bring out the worst in you. The worst. And I mean the worst. All the things that you would you would not ordinarily do when you were single, you will find yourself doing it now that you are two. And it's not supposed to be that way. But it's just because you found yourself in a toxic um, marriage. And you know, I also said that two are better than one. Not battered by one. It's not supposed to be um, a battering experience for anyone. You know, um, even though some people believe that oh, it's only the men that battered the women, but the honest truth is there are also some women battering men. They are battering men psychologically. They are battering them in, in every application by not supporting the man, you know, by not um, pushing the man to achieve his vision, his goals, his dreams for life, you know, they, they, they just form a kind of distraction for the man to be able to focus on his business, on his career, or, or on his endeavor. And we also know that there are some men too that, you know, they, they finished their wives in the sense that they, you know, they just make sure that this woman will not amount to anything. They don't want to see her succeed. They don't want to see her have any pursuit. You know, no encouragement whatsoever. It's not supposed to be like that. So what I always tell people is that if you know that you would um, leave this person, if you know you will make this person worse than you met them, please, it's better you don't even go there. You don't go into the marriage at all. But if you are sure that you are going to labor with that person, you are going to work together. Laboring there means you will work 
together. You will work together in every ramification, every ramification, and I mean, you will do work, as in you will earn. You will also do work helping with, with the shirts, helping with the children, helping with everything that will make the house or the home conducive for your family to live in and to try, you know, that means you are ready to, to work it out, to make it work. You are willing to pay your part, you are willing to give it your time, your energy, you are willing to give it your mental um, abilities, you know, but not just to sit back and say, oh, I have a competent partner, I have a capable partner, so they will handle it. No, that is not a good attitude. If you have that attitude in marriage, you need to change because your partner will not experience that two are better than one. And it's important they experience it because it's actually meant to be a blessing and not a cost to them. You know, that marriage is supposed to be a blessing to them and not a cost. So you shouldn't make them feel like, oh, they did the wrong thing by choosing to get married in the first place. This is very important. And for those that are bad, bad dream, their spouses, we need to desist from that as well. We need to understand what this thing called marriage is all about. It's meant for fulfillment. It's meant to bring the best out of people. It's meant to make you become the best and the best and the best version of you. You know, it's, it's not supposed to impoverish you. It's not supposed to um, rubbish you. It's not a union that is meant to, you know, to downgrade you, degrade you, and make you depressed. No, it's, it's a union that is supposed to spoil you up to do greater things in life. It's a union that is supposed to enrich you in every ramification. I mean, life is in stages. The fact that you don't have all the money is not the only you won't have it tomorrow. But we must see the seeds that you are sowing now for you to experience that harvest of wealth in future. So it is very important that both are laboring because it is when you both labor that you will have that good return, that good reward for the work you are doing, it is when both are laboring that you will experience that better. Two are better than one. That is when you will experience it. And so if you are not experiencing it, it's time for you to get down to work rather than complaining, rather than depending, you know, on one partner to make it work. It's not going to work until both of you, you know, work together and you know, you give it the time, the effort, and whatever um, energies you need to make it what you need to put it into that union. So it's very important that we know this. Even as young people that are planning to get married, you need to have these two at the back of your mind. That is a union. Marriage is a union that is meant to make both of you better than when you were single. So. Make sure you have all it takes to have to to make the other person become the best version of um, themselves, and not make them worse off than you met them. It's very important. And the last thing I'll say is that um, as you both work together to see that you make um, yourselves better than you met each other, make sure you also pray together, pray to God because it is God that blesses everything that we do so that is also very important but praying without work or without working at it is also you know a futile or a fruitless effort so you must do the two you must pray and see it's only that prayer that will help you succeed in that home and you must also work at it as though it is only working at it that will make both of you succeed so please i'm challenging us today that Make sure that your partner, that your wife, that your husband, that you are investing your time into them. You are investing in them to make sure they come out better than you met them. Each, each of um, your, your spouse should be able to say, wow, I'm actually a better person now. You know, now that I've met you, 
than before I met you. They shouldn't say, oh, I regretted, I caused the day I met you. You shouldn't be like that. Please, if your partner's experience is like that, you need to make amends. You need to revisit all the issues and make sure that you are making it a fulfilling experience for them. I would like to stop here today. I hope that you have learned something and we will continue during the week to continue to put up different topics, different tasks. Please make sure you continue to follow us. Make sure you comment on our post. Let's hear your perspective. And lastly, make sure you invite someone because I believe there are so many people out there you know that need the knowledge we are sharing here. Thank you so much for joining us today. I remain your host, Morelia and Obuti. Till we meet again. I say bye bye.